There's a reason you always trust your gut. Your whole body's health depends on it. Did you know 70% of your immune system resides in your gut? Invest in your health with Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Get whole body benefits including gut, heart, skin, and digestive health from 24 clinically and scientifically studied probiotic strains and a plant-based prebiotic. Go to seed.com slash gut and use code 25GUT for 25% off your first month. That's seed.com slash gut, code 25GUT. Hi, I'm Brandon. and I love the way home. I'm Dan and I also love the way home. Well, I am Alex Clark. I'm one of the co-showrunners and co-creators of The Way Home, and I also happen to really love The Way Home. <laughs> and I'm Marley Reed. I'm one of the co-creators and executive producers of The Way Home. And surprise, surprise, I'm a pretty big fan, too. And this is the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. Brandon and friends host his podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Um, yeah, today's an exciting day, Dan. Big day. This is an exciting day. Big day. We nailed the intro. We did nail the intro good. first We're off time. to a good start. Yep. Yes. We yep. have Alex and Marley with us, executive producers <sighs> of The Way Home, The Way Home. And it's not every day that we get to talk to two people at once, but it's uh, especially a, a special day when we're talking about The Way Home. Yes, A it show is. that we both love. That's right. Yeah. And are eagerly awaiting season two. Eagerly awaiting season two. And and uh, Alex and Marley have promised to answer all of our questions. That's right. They're not going to dodge no any. stone on turns. They're not going to say they can't. So this is going to be exciting. serious. It's um, exciting. I do want to dive into a little bit uh, of uh, each of your careers before The Way Home, if that's okay. Alex, If we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about uh, you and how you got started in the TV world and what you have made, what, what you're proudest of maybe leading up to The Way Home. Okay, well, I was going to say I'm proudest of The Way Home, obviously. <laughs> no, I, uh, I've been in the industry, I guess, for the last, oh my gosh, 15 years-ish, a little bit. Uh, and, you know, ahead of this, I was working on a show called Heartland. Uh, it's pretty big here in Canada. And I think, you know, the States has caught on as well. It's in its currently in its 16th wow. season, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I was on it for about six years of that. And uh, in the midst of that, got the call about this amazing concept that uh, Marley Reed here had created and basically got sent this amazing treatment about a show about a mother and a daughter and a daughter who travels through time. And, and it just felt incredibly kismet meant to be. And I said, sign me up, please. Yes, please. Love that. Marley, how about you? Uh, so I actually took a bit of a different path. Uh, I've been working for the last five or so years uh, as a development executive. So it's a little bit of an odd thing that I, I ended up pitching my own show and then sold it and then made the jump over to writer producer from there. So Wow. So yeah. <laughs> did you like, first of all, y'all are both from Canada, correct? Yeah, okay. we're both in Toronto. Okay, fantastic. And this idea of yours, you pitched it how many times? Did, was it first? Because I heard it was like a part of Netflix, but before Hallmark, like what was the, can, can I have that story? But also how many, like how many times did you pitch this and hear no before you heard yes? Or was it just, oh, twice? No, once. Once. So I, I pitched it once when I was straight out of film school. It went terribly. Uh, I clearly hadn't really figured out the concept yet. Uh, I was horrified. I never pitched it again for 10 years. Wow. So what was uh, that like? on it. Did you just walk in and go, hear me out, pond? Like, what happened? I, you know, it, again, it, it needed time to marinate. It, I hadn't worked a lot of the kinks out. I pitched it in a competition, actually, that went terribly, and the judge interrupted me midway through Ooh. and said, this kind of just sounds like a ripoff of Back to the Future. And I was like, oh. Uh, uh, couldn't recover. Uh, yeah. Horrifying experience. Went on to become a development executive. You know, it was always kind of marinating in the back of my mind. And then my boss at Nashama Entertainment, Arnie Zapersky, uh, you know, he was asking if I had any ideas for series. Um, and I brought him this one. I worked on it. I fixed some of the problems. I figured out how time travel would work better for the concept. Uh, and then we pitched it to Lisa Hamilton Daily at Netflix. That was the one and only place we pitched it. 
she bought it there and then she ended up bringing it with her when she went to Hallmark. So yeah, it's been pitched twice. <laughs> I love that. That's I, I not I have no idea how often that happens where uh, somebody is at one network or or s- streaming service or whatever, and then that person leaves, takes something with them to another place. I imagine that uh, is kind of, was weird. Maybe like you had like Netflix on your mind, and then you kind of have to go. Well, does that change everything? Like, what was that process like for you? Hearing, hey, Netflix, that's wonderful, and then oh, I guess we're going to homework now, which is also great, just different. It's, I mean, it is, it's extremely rare for a, a, a producer, for a development executive to, to take a project with them. And we were so lucky <laughs> that Lisa did. Uh, and yes, when she landed at Hallmark, we were sort of going, okay, well, you know, people die and, <laughs> and this is, you know, it's not necessarily the happiest of endings. How does that sort of fit with, with the Hallmark way of things? And we were so, so lucky because, mm-hmm. you know, right from the minute one at Hallmark, Lisa said, we want it the way it was. And then yeah. we had these incredible creative uh, executives at Hallmark that really were our champions in keeping Netflix tone. You know, because at the end of the day, it is a show about heart and family. And and what was so great was we were allowed to kind of not have the happy, happy endings that you would normally mm-hmm. expect. They felt, you know, they wanted to keep it as real as possible, <laughs> other than the time travel. Yeah, part. well, <laughs> yeah. who knows? We don't know. There could be, you could be from the, I don't know. Anyway, the... <laughs> The, the thing that I do love about the show, just to piggyback on that real quick, is that you do have, like, I do think there is beauty in the ashes. Like, when you lose something, I think there's something to be said for how that affects your character. And to have this boy, Jacob, that disappears at such a young age and how it affects everyone and finding redemption from that is only possible if you have the darkness of that loss there. So... I, that really was the question was how much did Hallmark come in and go, Hey, this is great. And we love it, but we have, we have notes. Like, did they, did they do that? Was, was there much of that no. at all? No, no. Wow. They, they were so supportive of the idea that came to them. I mean, you know, yeah. really all that changed was, you know, runtime. Yeah. For broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta get that 42 <laughs> minutes thing. But what about. When did, Tight 42. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Uh, yeah. Apparently the people at Stranger Things were like 42. What about 84? <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, I think there's a happy medium there. Gosh, uh, there is. Somewhere you in between 42. You can do 42. good TV in 42 minutes. It's possible. We yeah. used to do it all the time. Like uh, watching shows mm-hmm. when I was a kid. But I don't know where that, yeah. you know, where we went off the rails there. When did Andy McDowell get involved? Like when did we, like that's a big deal to land her. Right, like she's from. I mean, in her mind, she was there from the start. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, did you write it for her? We were definitely we really, imagining her. Wow. Yeah, from day one, we couldn't imagine anyone else who could really bring what she brought to the role. But also, you know, she's just she's just so incredible in the sense that she is the one character that we needed to play in both eras. Mm-hmm. And, and in our mind, that was Andy. Like, she's just so incredibly well, ageless. That, like, she, you could play 99 yeah. Dell and 2023 Dell and not think twice. She's just incredible. She's from about 20 minutes away from where we are right now, where my, our hometown here. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. So she's like pride of South Carolina Where's, for us. So she's from Gaffney. Oh. Yeah, people love, like, she's wonderful. She's a national treasure. So that's fantastic. And I do think, you know, there's a sensibility to her role that's very difficult when you have to play 24 years apart. And she does such a good job. I mean, and okay. you guys, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I mean, that you can have a great idea, but when you can land an Andy McDowell, like it brings some credibility to, to, to the yeah. whole proceeding that is just, you can't really put a price on that. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, she, she came in quite early on, which was again, just such an amazing vote of confidence for, for us and for the show, you know, she read the pilot uh, and, and just kind of fell in love, which we were again, so lucky that she did. And so she was our first sort of the, the big news of, of getting her was our first big casting uh, speak in triumph. Awesome. <laughs> it's a good triumph. That's how you, pretty good triumph. you, I don't know if yeah. you can get much better than that. <laughs> yeah. I want to start at the cold open of the season <laughs> because yes. it's fascinating, especially when you look at the season a, as a whole, because we don't really go back there until the end again. And so it's this amazing like sandwich of, 
of flashback. Um, where did that come from or when did it happen in the process? Were you looking for something special to start the season off with or was it something that came organically and somebody in the writer's room was like, I got what if we started with it? How did that kind of come about? Because it was a brilliant opening and to that. And did you know the, the, the last shot when you created yeah. the first one? Well, I would say the first shot was always from the very beginning in my head. Okay. It was just such a clear and the way they shot it, I was like, this is exactly what I always wanted. <laughs> uh, Heather and Alex, our showrunners, were the geniuses who came up with making it end with that as well. So, you know, I don't think I ever had much rhyme or reason to it. Like, <laughs> I I always knew it was Kat and eventually we'd reveal it. Mm -hmm. But they brought this great... Um, bookend kind of feel to it that you know we set up something at the beginning of this season and we reveal it at the end and tie it all together nicely but we did we did always know it was going to be cat mm -hmm. because we shot uh that segment fairly early on in our first block you had to because you had to match the weather mm -hmm. so it, it, this is the kind of show that you do have to really know your yeah. ending before you even start shooting because based off of where someone will go in time, you have to film that to match a certain season. Like for example, in our season one, you know, obviously Alice returning and mailing the letter in season or in episode 10, that we had to shoot in our first block because it had to look like summer. It had to look like they hadn't gotten there and yet. And the, the mm -hmm. fact and that you're paying so attention to those of, things <laughs> tells me all mm -hmm. I need to know about this, oh, yeah. this yeah. program. Uh, I do have- There's a lot of brains breaking in the, yeah. in the writer's room for sure and, and then also in the production office when we tell them what we need yeah, and they're oh, like I bet. I <laughs> we also have to schedule in some scenes from episode 10 <laughs> you know? Man, i do i'm a tv nerd and i'm a time travel nerd so if you'll just bear me the time i'm gonna try i have two questions mm -hmm. the first is on the tv side of things and i think you kind of answered it but i'd love for you to dig deeper into like Two examples of two of my favorite TV shows, uh, Lost, Breaking Bad. So Lost, like J.J. Abrams said, I knew the last scene of Lost from the time I started the show. Um, you know, and I don't want to spoil Lost for anyone <laughs> 20 years later. Hey, I watched it for the first time during COVID. It so. opens in on Jack's eye and pans out, and the last one pans back in on his eye and closes. And he's like, I knew that was how we were going to end, begin and end with Jack in the Woods, blah, blah, blah. And then Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan would, like, routinely say hey we would sit in the writing room at the beginning of the year and during the season and go and just throw ideas and then say all right let's follow the avenue that has that makes the most sense and has the most uh integrity to our characters and even if that's not where we started that that's where we're going because that's where the characters are leading us and so i feel like you kind of have to have one writer's room or the other. I feel like it's hard to have a balance. Like you either have to say, hey, this is the playbook, or you have to say, where are our characters taking us? And, and I, I, so what is, what was kind of, I don't know if that's more for Marley uh, on the writer side of things or, or more for you, Alex, but what was the driving force with a show like this with time travel and some intricate plot details and some definite like subtle audience manipulation what was the driving force in how you told your story? I, I think, you know, <clears throat> Marley really, you know, especially with our first season, had, had mastered the sort of tent poles as she was working her way through the concept ahead of, you know, my, myself and Heather coming on board. So we were really lucky when we got to the writer's room that we kind of knew the trajectory for the mm -hmm. season. We knew that Kat was the White Witch. We knew what was going to happen to Colton and how Kat and Alice were involved in that. We knew all those plot points. Um, so we kind of had a map and, you know, what goes in what episode. Uh, but the nice thing was that once we started casting and seeing, you know, who, who Kat really was through Kyler and who Alice really was through Sadie, you know, we could play a little bit with what they were doing on an episode to episode basis while always keeping those tent poles mm -hmm. in mind. Mm, that's good. 
It's the most beautiful time of the year, and JCPenney Beauty has gifts for all. Shop our newest brand, Smashbox and Too Faced Cosmetics, to check the glam off your list. Give it your all with designer fragrances from Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana. Plus, check out the latest products from Murad Skincare and Olaplex Hair Care. With hundreds of brands and gift ideas, there's something for everyone. Treat yourself to a free mini service from our experts and book an appointment at our salon to get holiday ready today. And as always, shop online 24-7. JCPenney, make your holidays count. Downloading an app can be the start of a teen learning a new skill, discovering a community, or igniting their creativity. But parents should have a say in which apps are right for their teens. That's why Instagram wants to work with Congress to require parental approval wherever teens under 16 download apps. Learn more at Instagram.com slash parental approval. I like that. Do we have a map for season two? Do. Of course we do. Of course. <laughs> Did you have a map of season two before season one? Uh, we had ideas for yeah. sure. It's funny you were saying it could only be one or the other. I, Alex, I don't know if you'd agree. I kind of do feel like we're in the middle in a, in a grander scheme. We, we certainly mm -hmm. have ideas for ongoing seasons, but we are also shaping the story as we go based on you know, certain storylines that resonate better or, you know, certain combinations of actors that go well together. So season like, two is really, yeah. you know. And, and I feel like in case you didn't get renewed, which would have been, you know, people would have rioted, <laughs> but in case you didn't, <laughs> to have a great, have a to have a great ending like you have, yes. you could be so proud of that. Like if Hallmark did the wrong yes. thing and was like, you're not renewed, you could be like, look at these 10 episodes and we nailed it. Like we landed it perfectly and people would have questions, but you stuck the landing of the big mystery that you begin with. So the props to you. Um, but like to okay. your point of like following characters, like if for instance, you listen to a podcast from South Carolina that said, hey, the <laughs> only guy that knows what's going on in both times periods like if, if he were to be nefarious yeah. if, if the guy that's that is the only person that is somewhat omniscient in this show who knows what's going to happen before it happens a little bit if, if that guy were to be a bad guy wouldn't that be fun uh I, I know that everyone in hallmark would hate you but it would make us happy uh it was that like is that are we are you to the point where you're where everything's on the table for these characters or are there some things that are sacred and like elliot is is a, a just a god-fearing man who would never do anything of the sort um <laughs> I, I have to say i really did love that theory as you guys explained and in my head I, I started looking at evan a little differently as you as, as we were editing the show i was like oh god me, you people. but uh, <laughs> but um yeah i think you know i think especially with the first season you do need to uh know where your characters are going to wind up give the audience you know what they really want out of out of that kind of a relationship of a will they won't they unrequited love um and you know who knows where we're going to take it in a season two i mean that's that's sort of the or season or 10 season, yeah. 10. Yeah. I mean, season <laughs> 10 of course we just right now we've got a commitment for the way home 10 seasons right? wow <laughs> we just got it from the ep so sure, this sure, is sure. breaking it's yeah. breaking right here yes it's true it's do I mean, you do you in your mind have a a perfect like at least this variation of the show, like Ted Lasso, he had an idea for the, the, the show he wanted to create. And then if something comes off of that, great. Is there a, a perfect in your mind amount of seasons to tell this specific story? And then it can continue because it's time travel and we can do that forever if we want to. I think, I think we would love to see it go for an infinite, you know, a heartland <laughs> amount of seasons would be ideal. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> the, the cool thing about time travel is, is that you can do that. You know what I mean? There is plenty yeah. of yeah. world building that you can, you can do. And that. By season 11, they're going to be with the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. In Port Haven though. In Port Haven. Of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and then, you know, Netflix could buy the movies from you and you could make like a heart, like, anyway, sorry, we have a whole different, anyway, uh, 
My, my time travel question. Um, so I love time travel movies. First of all, did you, Marley, did you, when you're uh, designing this show and they basically said you're ripping off Back to the Future, which I don't think this is at all. I don't. I think you clearly did Just some You didn't hear the original pitch. Yeah, that's true. The first pitch may have been like, so there's this girl. Her name's McFly. Uh, she goes back. There's Chuck Berry. There's a dance. Enchantment under the sea. So did you have a... Do you have like some time travel movies or shows that you love that are like beloved by you or like classics that you really love? Or was this just an idea that happened to include time travel for you? Uh, a little bit of both. I definitely wasn't setting out to create a time travel show. It came from this kind of mind wandering thought of, you know, if you could meet one of your parents as a teenager, would you have gotten along, you know, like, like my mom was always this real rebel hippie out in the world adventure girl and I was such a theater drama nerd <laughs> <laughs> so in my head I always thought no we definitely wouldn't have gotten along we were such opposites so that that was where the idea came from um but there are certain time travel shows and books that that you know I I did love the way uh time traveler's wife I loved the way they used time travel mm -hmm because it was different than most time travel shows. What I didn't want to do was create a show where we just get mired in this trying to change things, trying to fix things, uh, you know, many worlds kind of mess. Um, and we certainly play with that in the show because anyone who's been through tragedy, of course you're going to try so hard to change things. Um, but it, it was always this idea that what's happened has always happened and, and you can't change things. So I liked that. I love that. Is there an Elliot in your uh, writer's room whose sole job is to keep the rules that you've kind of put in place for the time travel? No, that's that's kind of on. I, I would say it's you and me, Marley, right? That <laughs> are, the, are, the, are the rule checkers. <laughs> on yeah. yeah, yeah. That it's was hard. that was my yeah. kind of nerd question. Was time travel? Mm -hmm. You can either, and I've said it on the on the show when we cover it, but you can either have a can't change the past can't change the future with the past timeline or you can have a like create other timelines Multiverse you know or you can mm -hmm. have a butterfly effect where you go back and one little thing changes everything but yeah. you have to once you kind of choose one of those you have to stick with that or or some viewers are going to say wait a minute they're not following the rules by that some you mean yourself yeah. me yes <laughs> i'm the one who will be the first one to be like they didn't follow the rules uh but yeah and so was there a lot of discussion on on that on what our time travel rules are or was it as you've already alluded to marley the idea that this show is about this idea and you can't you can't change it if you spend your time perseverating on the past you'll miss out on what it means to love others in the future and love others in the present. W w was there a lot of time spent on that? Um, are you are you there, Marley? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know, something just cut out. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, it was a challenge and it's a, it's a good challenge because yeah, as you say, this is, in a time travel show, you do have to be loyal to the rules you set up, otherwise mm -hmm. you lose faith of your viewer you lose the involvement of your viewer because yeah if you're all of a sudden jumping all over the place and and breaking rules that you yourself have created then then you you your story becomes implausible so we were really really uh cautious and 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 very strict about about you know the, the things we set up and i think that the fun the creativity comes from playing with that idea mm -hmm. of what happened will always happen you know, when you think about Dell saying, well, there was a woman at the funeral and I think my, my husband had an affair. It's well, that did actually happen, but guess what? You know, and, and I, I think that was where the, the sort of creativity in the writer's room really came to fruition because mm -hmm. when you have these rules, you kind of can test the boundaries of them. You can play with them and keep people on their toes still while also saying, no, this is a hard, fast thing. Mm -hmm. I and that. I think moving forward, we also, you know, we were very aware in the season two writers room of the rules we've set up. Mm -hmm. People are expecting them now. So, you know, how do we surprise people without breaking our own rules? Yeah. Mm. That's good. Can you go forward in time? Yeah, that's my big question. Can you go forward in time? 
no comment. <laughs> yeah. No comment? Not none? Not even a little comment? I mean, it's a rule we haven't broached yet in the show, so. Yeah. I know. I know you haven't. I, I, I think that you have. I think that you've broached that rule by establishing what happens if you were to go in the future would inherently change the past. But I know that I'm, I'm in a disagreement with brain on that, which makes this fun. I, because I do think that that all we've ever seen is time travel back and then going back to present day or to the future. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think there's, there's two sets of rules too, in, in the sense that there's the time travel rules, but there's also the pond rules. Yeah. And, Ooh. and, and that's kind of something that we explore within first season, but also, We'll carry forward as well just to make it the logic of it all a little clearer i think yeah. It's the most beautiful time of the year, and JCPenney Beauty has gifts for all. Shop our newest brand, Smashbox and Too Faced Cosmetics, to check the glam off your list. Give it your all with designer fragrances from Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana. Plus, check out the latest products from Murad Skincare and Olaplex Hair Care. With hundreds of brands and gift ideas, there's something for everyone. Treat yourself to a free mini service from our experts and book an appointment at our salon to get holiday ready today. And as always, shop online 24-7. JCPenney, make your holidays count. There's a reason you always trust your gut. Your whole body's health depends on it. Did you know 70% of your immune system resides in your gut? Invest in your health with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Get whole body benefits including gut, heart, skin, and digestive health from 24 clinically and scientifically studied probiotic strains and a plant-based prebiotic. Go to seed.com gut and use code 25GUT for 25% off your first month. That's seed.com slash gut, code 25GUT. You guys said that you listened to the to our show, which was so flattering, and we're happy that you did. Um, in the first episode, I did say that the dog was time traveling, and I and I, <laughs> and I just would like credit from the, from the producer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, when yeah. you heard that, were you like, how, wait, that's supposed to be a big secret, or were you just like, <laughs> He got like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Nobody's gonna b believe him. But it was a little bit of both for me. <laughs> it was a bit of a oh no, and then oh, maybe he's, like, he's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's the fun of time travel shows. So much yeah. of it is just literally throwing out like, what if it's this? What if it's that's this? right? Yeah. yeah, and so like well, even. Like even with Jacob and like theories we have on Jacob, like what we if we were way off on some of those? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> like I still think he could be Byron, and maybe he has some a head. <laughs> maybe he has a head. Like when yeah. you when you time travel, maybe he hit his head on a rock. He came back. The, he's back. The fact, and then he's and then he and then he aged, and now he's older. I don't know. I'm just saying. And trying to date his own mom. Yeah. But if he doesn't, he doesn't remember know. it, he, maybe he hit his head. <laughs> no, it's it's uh it, no, it's still very. It's probably too dark for Hallmark. Would be my guess. It's more like an old boy. Like I will is, say when that uh, when yeah. that was happening, I was like, I I guess that's not what's going yeah. on here. But also, well, look, the fact the fact that you guys like the fact that people are theorizing is yeah. so great. like to us that was just like oh we've done our job that people are actually watching the show and then talking amongst themselves about, well, where do you think Jacob is? And who do you think the white witch is? I mean, I have to say that was the one that I'm most proud of is that no one really got that it was Kat. And so yeah. that, that was like, a big one. Was, yeah. yeah. I thought it was Andy McDowell. I thought it was Dell. Yeah. That's who I thought yeah. it was the whole time for sure. She'd been time traveling the whole time. The way she, you guys do a great job with her dialogue. I don't know if it's you or somebody in the writer's room to make sure you never give away it's just enough ambiguity to, as to whether or not she knows that Where time if travel. It turns out she can time it, travel. It's so like, perfect. Okay. It is the thing that I just don't anticipate. We watch Hallmark movies for a living and, and Lifetime movies and Up movies. I just don't anticipate that level of just scrutiny and dialogue that you guys brought to it. And I, I think you nailed that for sure. And the cat thing did catch me off guard. I thought that was a really well done thing. But part of the beauty of this to me is, is that anyone that has gone to the pond, if you don't know where they are, they can be really any age because if they travel back in time 60 years ago and the pond takes you where you're supposed to go, there's a lot of fluidity there, no pun intended, that allows you some some opportunity. And maybe you hit your head and you forget who your mom is when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it sounds gross. I'm just saying it shouldn't be off the table altogether. Man. Byron's weird. He just ups and leaves all of us. I'm just saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of archives there. A lot of archives. Yeah. Let me. Can, a lot of archives. can I ask you this? Um, you said that Hallmark gave you no notes, and this is weird, but it, I, I do think for us that has been, we've been watching this network for five straight years for our full time job now. Um, we got to hear utterances of hell and damn on this show. And I think both of those words were used correctly in The Way Home. I think you could get away with much stronger dialogue considering the circumstances of losing your father or your little brother or jumping into a pond and going back 24 years. I feel like like the very least you would hear is those two, uh, realistically speaking. Was there really no, there were really like, was there any limit on that? Because we've, I mean, we've watched 500 Hallmark Christmas movies. I've never heard it mentioned before. So that was like, it felt like a new Hallmark to me when we heard that. It would be weird for Santa to be like, what the hell? No, so (laughs) like it it fits. It definitely (laughs) fits. I mean, we we do air at 9 p.m. That's true. (laughs) Of course. No, I think we were really lucky in that, in that, you know, on the series side of things at Hallmark, they really are trying to do new things. And we, we kind of were, you know, at the forefront of that with the show. And and as a result, they were willing to sort of take these risks when they felt earned, as you say, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that, that we could go that little extra mile. I mean, I think one of the things that actually surprised us the most was, was the, the cat Elliot kiss. Mm, Yeah. Because like, that was, yeah, that was, Steamy situation, yes, and we were, you know, that's that was what we had hoped for. But it was amazing when when Hallmark was like, "That is amazing," <laughs> and they were they sided with us. It was fabulous, and and I think little things like that uh, we were so grateful for, and and we were so lucky to have the creative team that we we do have at Hallmark mm-hmm. because they are willing to go that little extra for this to make it more real and to to make it feel um, special. Mm-hmm. How much are you all working uh, from the writer's room to filming? Like episode six comes to mind, which is such a, a great episode of building tension. Oh, my gosh. Um, throughout the episode and Excellent. trying to find Jacob and then the whole reveal. And I, I imagine that when you're in the writer's room, you're like, this is really good on paper. Um, but then it's up to, uh, uh, on set to make sure that tension comes from the paper onto the screen and then there's so many pieces of of making tv that is crazy but then it also makes sure in the editing room that it all flows together how um what is that process like for you in crafting something that works really well on the page and then to finally put it out and make it actually work the way you hope it works um, well, episode six, you know, was written by Heather Conkey, who's my co-showrunner and also my mom, just FYI. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and she she just, I yeah, I'm still in awe of episode six. And, and Marley and I, you know, the way that this show kind of ended up working because of the continuity of it all, and you are basically making two shows in one uh, with a whole different set of characters, a whole different set uh, and, and, and wardrobe and all that stuff. One of us always had to be on set to to say like oh no it's actually like february um so those plants can't be there or you know whatever it was and we were both very lucky uh as well as heather to to be there for the carnival of it all which took three days to shoot Mm. and uh and it was it was it was intense and we had an incredible director uh grant harvey who who just like knocked it out of the park and everyone was just everyone was on the same team and, and, and was through the whole production. Everyone really believed in these scripts. Um, it was so lovely going on set and, you know, you'd hear, you know, lighting guys and, and, and set deck people talking amongst themselves about like, well, who do you think the white witch is? And the fact that everyone was just so invested uh, really did allow for a show, an episode like six to really just fly off the page. It was incredible. Are you guys having yeah. to do anything? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Marley. Oh, I was just going to say that was really, I, it's safe to say, our most complicated, ambitious episode of right. the season. And, you know, multiple cameras going at this carnival set. I, you know, there were points where all three of us were in different places filming different things. And, yeah, it was astounding to watch. But I do think, you know, it it turned out exactly as we imagined. Like, mm-hmm. just the way that we pitched it in the room and then the way Heather wrote it, 
it just it turned out so much like we wanted that's got to be really satisfying yeah. to see something yeah. and, and have it be pitch perfect the way you wanted it to look that's mm-hmm. got to be incredibly satisfying mm-hmm. do you guys have like anything for the cast to sign for season two from a spoiler standpoint where they have to like sign they can't like talk about certain things or is there certain verbiage you give the cast when they have to when they like they get grilled by us or something and they have to answer these questions is there certain things they're allowed to say and not say or is it just a don't talk about the plot of the show (laughs) situation like when annie mcdowell comes on our show of course when you have andy when she comes on in three weeks july 11th i believe when she comes on it's not happening she she yeah, oh. got everybody out there. She, that would be great. I mean, tell her tell her that we're South Carolina boys and we love her dearly. Please, we will. Uh, no, I will. Um, she, uh, is it? Do they have how much freedom do they have in that regard? Uh, not much. <laughs> Fair. You know, I think they they get the scripts uh, quite close to when we shoot, probably like two or three weeks ahead of time. I think, you know, we, we made a point this season, especially because we had our cast when we were in our writer's room for season two, uh, to talk with them about, you know, what they loved about first season, what they, what they kind of, their hopes and dreams were for their characters. And that was really great to do off the top. Um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of in the dark until, until we go into prep on a, on an, on an episode block because we shoot two episodes at the same time. Wow. And, um, and it's fun. It's fun to do the read throughs because yeah, there's, there's people that go, wait, what? <laughs> As they're saying their lines. And it's yeah. That's great. It's like, yeah, no. And, and yeah, but we're all kind of under this cone of silence in regards to, in regards to season two, uh, you know, crew, everyone, not just Gaff. Well, let me ask you about season two. Um, <laughs> how much of season two will take place in uh with in the white witch time frame versus modern day i'm gonna i'm gonna still gonna ask it is still it, gonna ask is it, it a 20 percent <laughs> a 40 percent i imagine we get more white witch uh, in season two than we got this season now, the better question is is are you having to construct a third set <laughs> a colonial set if you will um yeah, we <laughs> sadly, I wish we could. I wish we could say something, but uh, but yeah, all all we can sort of say is that yes, questions will be answered and oh more gosh. questions will be revealed. <laughs> it's, questions it's, will it's be all going to be Elliot's villain or origin story. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... <laughs> dude, if you show up and they're about to burn Cat, and one of the people with a torch is Elliot. Elliot like, walks. On, no, man. Elliot walks in and says, "Stop." And then he grabs the torch. He says, I want this one. Roll credits, end of series, because Hallmark just... How did you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, Let me ask you this. And then Jacob walks up with his mom, and they're holding hands. (laughs) So this... It's it's a weird season. You probably will answer, uh, unlike that question. What percent of season two... No, I'm just kidding. Um... (laughs) The uh, uh, music is such a big part of this show. And I graduated high school in 2001, and I feel like a lot of what's going on in the high school in 99 like, is just like meant for me. Like It's like that era. I mean, they're singing Sister Hazel in the car. I mean, just all kinds of great stuff here. Like, my question is, is that sometimes you guys do use the original tracks, and sometimes you'll have like a really great cover of Baby One More Time, which is ju- like unbelievably good cover. Uh, what all goes into that? I-, I assume a lot of it is money because if you cover the song, then you don't have to pay as much for the rights to it. Am I way off base there? or what? Is that all a big budget conversation? Or do you guys go in and go, we need the- these eight 90s songs. Get the spin doctors on the phone. They're like, what do you do? Like, what? Like, how does that work exactly? Yeah, we've become very close with Sister Hazel. It's, it's oh, really yes. Isn't that the dream? That's the friendship that's been created. Uh, we have an incredible music supervisor named Jennifer Pikin, and she does, you know, she's given a budget every season, and we have to stay within that budget for sure. But there, it's a, it's everyone on the show knows how important the music is. So we've been given a really lovely chance to, to yeah, do a little deep dive. Because, you know, we've always said, it is a time travel show, but you know, season one, we're, we're traveling back to 99, which technically mm-hmm. is not that long ago. And so music, not much changes. I mean, my parents still have the same couch from 99, you know, <laughs> what replaces you is the music. 
And that's what sort yeah. of makes you go, oh God, yeah, do you remember that song? Like, where was I when I first heard that? And um, mm -hmm. and so I think from, from day one, that was a hugely important part of things for us. Uh, contrary to popular belief, and Jennifer can correct me if I'm wrong, I think whether it's a cover or whether it's the real deal, there isn't much of a difference. Wow, <laughs> yeah. okay. And we were, I mean, Sadie, who plays Alice, uh, is such an incredible singer. And, you know, I when even when she auditioned and she sang, it was just like, okay, there's Alice. And and her yeah. cover of Baby One More Time was just like, we we, we all fell in love with it. It was it's such a perfect deconstructed mm. version mm -hmm. of it. I'm still waiting for it to drop on Spotify. By <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I would listen to that. Um, speaking of the music, the episode titles, uh, when was it? When we noticed that a lot of them were songs, but not all of them but are songs. Are all of them songs? What's, what is it? Because like, there are some that's very clear, and there's some that I'm like, that is a song, but it came out in like 2021. I don't know if that like... Everything you know, is a song title. So what? What? What is it? What are we looking for? Remember when we here? talked about how we like to stick to rules? <laughs> Sometimes that didn't always pan out. <laughs> I, I just didn't think anyone was going to pay attention to the name. Yeah. Like we kind of did it for fun. I mean, episode then, three was I don't want to miss a thing, yeah. and you didn't think we were yeah. going to notice. Tell me we're not singing that on here. Come yeah, on. there's nothing we could do about yeah. that. And then we, I think it was that episode. And then, then we were like, wait a minute, yeah, like, scar sure. tissue. That's a mother. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then, What's I mean, my age again? Evan Evan sings uh, "Time After Time," Cindy Lauper, and he crushes that. Like, th there's so much, you know. I, I think that, you know, I at the end of the day, and I think you guys deserve all the praise that you're getting. That what makes this show so special is if you you have doggedly put character first. It's not a time travel show first. It's fun for me to him and haw about it and talk to you about like keeping the rules, but you guys have made the characters indelible. You've made them people that we care about with integrity, who've suffered loss, who care, who act in a manner that the characters should act. And those are the touches that make this show flourish. And so it it's, should not come as a surprise to us that music is a big part of that. But how do you find out that somebody like Evan like, hey, Evan, could you give us a time after time? Like, how do you, like, how does that something, do you ask that in the interview process when you're auditioning them, or does that just come out of nowhere? That one, I think, came out of nowhere. I mean, yeah. I knew Evan could sing. Yeah. I think you played me that song at the premiere. Yeah, no, he, he and I had chatted about, uh, you know, as he was trying to figure out the character off the top of the season, and I mean, we had some really big conversations that were so great because uh, he, you know, so dedicated to that role. And it is a unique role in the sense that, yes, he does know all, and but he's also very trapped. And, uh, you know, he, he was sort of asking me what music I had been listening to as we worked in the writer's room. And I'd mentioned, you know, for the modern aspect of things, uh, an, an, an artist named Simmel, S-Y-M-L. And I'd been listening to a lot of his stuff just to, it felt like very moody for the present day stuff. And yeah, like around the premiere, he he sort of came to me and said, so I did something. <laughs> and um, it's this. And it was this incredible deconstructed cover of Time After Time in that sort of style. Wow. And we all, like I remember all of us listening to it uh, in New York and just going, oh my gosh, we got it. This has to be somewhere in this show. It's mm -hmm. crazy. And uh, no, that was that was that was all him. Um, one more question, and then uh, and then I think we'll, I think yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Um, is there any theory out there that you heard? Like, what what was your favorite theory? Yeah, just you, a laugher. Like just that you great, were just like, like this. Aside not from Byron is Jacob, like not sick which again, and you can have that for free. That's free. I'm not asking for anything. Elliot's the ultimate bad guy. I just save that one. But I is there anything you know. else out there that you've been like, you know what? That's not bad. Maybe tuck that away. Gosh. Oh God! Yes, but now I can't think of them. <laughs> I know there's Alex. She's not going to share those. those. No, no, no. Share no, one that she just... texted me, and it no, it wasn't a it wasn't a keeper one. It was a like what? <laughs> I can't remember. It, there, the funny one was someone pitching the Jacob is Byron theory. Yep. Or no, no, it was they were. Uh oh. Sorry, I'm cutting out again. It was their theory was that Jacob was Colton. Yes. Wow. I can't even remember how they'd worked it out, but it was Jacob becomes Colton. And then, but the screenshot I sent 
to Alex laughing so hard was this <laughs> commenter underneath them said, I really don't think Hallmark's going to go there with an incest storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Hallmark do- hasn't had notes yet, but you throw <laughs> that up there. Hallmark may have some notes. <laughs> I just don't think they're going to go there. Yeah, for it sure. It is, is the goal. All- sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no. I think all the all the, the questions about Dell and what she knows were yes. always really interesting to follow. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, again, we, we did keep her dialogue pretty ambiguous in those key moments just to, to kind of up that factor. But it was really nice to see people theorize to the point of like, no, she's the white witch. She's known all along. Or, you know, she knows where Jacob is. Or, you know, all that was those were the really fun ones to kind of watch. It's, and, you know. it's so great because she has so much gravitas and she can play like hurting mother and she can also play all knowing, wise, sage wisdom. And and it's you guys did such a great job. Ladies, I thank you so much yeah. for spending time talking to us. This has been just the best and we hope you come back when season two comes out and once again not give us any percentage on how much is taking place during colonial times um are we are we thinking similar time for season two time frame uh, for the premiere yeah uh tbd i mean i you know we're we're writing so that's it's exciting and yeah we're we're we're, yeah, I don't know how much I can divulge about that. So All just, right, well, you know, we're, what we're, we did right. get, the, 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 the scoop we got was 10 seasons have been confirmed. 10 so seasons confirmed. That, yeah. And that Correct. is good. And Correct. we'll try to get another totally. scoop and next I, time. And I guess us. Jacob's not dating his That's mom. Right. But <laughs> you never know. But you you never, I'm just saying, like. It, it, <laughs> Stop it. You go if you, but if yeah. you think about it too, though, if if you, uh, never mind, we're not going to get into it. Um, <laughs> you've made a wonderful show that you should be incredibly proud of because it is a joy to watch each and every week. And whenever it's coming back, we hope soon, we're ready. We're ready over here. There's no doubt about it. Well, and thank you guys for awesome. all of your support on the show through through your reviews. It was just it was such a joy to listen to you guys and and listen to the growing love for the show that right. we're supposed to hear. It was fabulous. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. You won Wonderful. me over every week. I love that. Um, <laughs> thank you all for joining us and we always end every episode by wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Deck the Hallmark's a Bravel Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi, but here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day. It's the most beautiful time of the year, and JCPenney Beauty has gifts for all. Shop our newest brand, Smashbox and Too Faced Cosmetics, to check the glam off your list. Give it your all with designer fragrances from Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana. Plus, check out the latest products from Murad Skincare and Olaplex Hair Care. With hundreds of brands and gift ideas, there's something for everyone. Treat yourself to a free mini service from our experts and book an appointment at our salon to get holiday ready today. And as always, shop online 24-7. JCPenney, make your holidays count. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. Join us at Starbucks for the most magical time of the year. When we don red aprons and handcraft delicious holiday drinks in our festive red cups that help get you in the holiday spirit. Stop into a Starbucks and taste the magic for yourself. There's a reason you always trust your gut. Your whole body's health depends on it. Did you know 70% of your immune system resides in your gut? Invest in your health with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. DSO-1 is formulated with 24 clinically and scientifically studied probiotic strains and a plant-based prebiotic to support whole body benefits. It works to promote healthy regularity and relief from occasional digestive discomfort and bloating. Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic is also formulated to support a healthy immune system. 
And it even helps you look healthier and more vibrant on the outside by promoting smooth, clear, healthy skin. Invest in your whole body's health with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Go to seed.com slash gut and use code 25GUT to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash gut. Code 25GUT. Looking to save big on holiday shopping? Xfinity Mobile has you covered. Now through January 10th, Ask how existing Xfinity customers can get a free unlimited intro line for a year when they buy one line of unlimited. Plus, see how to get $400 off an eligible 5G phone. Visit XfinityMobile.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. It's the most beautiful time of the year, and JCPenney Beauty has gifts for all. Shop our newest brand, Smashbox and Too Faced Cosmetics, to check the glam off your list. Give it your all with designer fragrances from Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana. Plus, check out the latest products from Murad Skincare and Olaplex Haircare. With hundreds of brands and gift ideas, there's something for everyone. Treat yourself to a free mini service from our experts and book an appointment at our salon to get holiday ready today. And as always, shop online 24-7. JCPenney, make your holidays count. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. What's the new holiday drink from Starbucks? We'll give you a hint. It's a festive twist on a classic holiday flavor. Meet the new iced gingerbread oat milk chai. Spice up your holidays and order on the Starbucks app today. There's a reason you always trust your gut. Your whole body's health depends on it. Did you know 70% of your immune system resides in your gut? Invest in your health with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. DSO-1 is formulated with 24 clinically and scientifically studied probiotic strains and a plant-based prebiotic to support whole body benefits. It works to promote healthy regularity and relief from occasional digestive discomfort and bloating. Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic is also formulated to support a healthy immune system, and it even helps you look healthier and more vibrant on the outside by promoting smooth, clear, healthy skin. Invest in your whole body's health with Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Go to seed.com slash gut and use code 25GUT to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash gut. Code 25GUT. Looking to save big on holiday shopping? Xfinity Mobile has you covered. Now through January 10th, Ask how existing Xfinity customers can get a free unlimited intro line for a year when they buy one line of unlimited. Plus, see how to get $400 off an eligible 5G phone. Visit XfinityMobile.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. It's the most beautiful time of the year, and JCPenney Beauty has gifts for all. Shop our newest brand, Smashbox and Too Faced Cosmetics, to check the glam off your list. Give it your all with designer fragrances from Calvin Klein and Dolce & Gabbana. Plus, check out the latest products from Murad Skincare and Olaplex Haircare. With hundreds of brands and gift ideas, there's something for everyone. Treat yourself to a free mini service from our experts and book an appointment at our salon to get holiday ready today. And as always, shop online 24-7. JCPenney, make your holidays count. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. Join us at Starbucks for the most magical time of the year when we don red aprons and handcraft delicious holiday drinks in our festive red cups that help get you in the holiday spirit. Stop into a Starbucks and taste the magic for yourself. 
Looking to save big on holiday shopping? Xfinity Mobile has you covered. Now through January 10th, ask how existing Xfinity customers can get a free unlimited intro line for a year when they buy one line of unlimited. Plus, see how to get $400 off an eligible 5G phone. Visit XfinityMobile.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Wayfair is ready to make your holiday season even more joyful. Shop all things home for you and everyone on your gift list. With an incredible selection of furniture, decor, and more. All with an amazing value that'll make this holiday season the best one yet. And right now, Wayfair is turning up the savings even more with huge deals and sales. Plus, thousands of items ship fast and free. Head to Wayfair.com or download the Wayfair app in the App Store to shop the latest limited deals so you can deck it all. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. Looking to save big on holiday shopping? Xfinity Mobile has you covered. Now through January 10th, ask how existing Xfinity customers can get a free unlimited intro line for a year when they buy one line of unlimited. Plus, see how to get $400 off an eligible 5G phone. Visit XfinityMobile.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. It's time to save. Clear the Rack is on at your Nordstrom Rack store. For a limited time, take an extra 25% off clearance. All sales are final. Hurry, shop this sale at Nordstrom Rack today. Please see NordstromRack.com or ask a store associate for details. Wayfair is ready to make your holiday season even more joyful. Shop all things home for you and everyone on your gift list. With an incredible selection of furniture, decor, and more. All with an amazing value that'll make this holiday season the best one yet. And right now, Wayfair is turning up the savings even more with huge deals and sales. Plus, thousands of items ship fast and free. Head to Wayfair.com or download the Wayfair app in the App Store to shop the latest limited deals so you can deck it all. Nissan has a car for everyone. Every driver who wants more. Whatever your more is, more fun, more freedom, more action. From sports cars, sedans, and EVs to pickups and crossovers, with Nissan's diverse lineup, anyone can find something to fit their more. Get more revs in their sports cars, more guts with all-wheel drive, and more than enough options to fit your driving style. Nissan can take you where you want to go. Learn more at NissanUSA.com.